Well, thank you very much, Janet, and uh, good morning, everyone. It's, it's good to see you here, and I was talking to a few of your colleagues earlier, and I understand that there was a bit of Christmas shopping going on last night, uh, not too far from the Eaton Centre here. It's, uh, for those of you out of town, I'm sure that's a great opportunity, but I, I also understand that our local pub economy may have uh, done well by some of you last night, which maybe is, is the explanation for the fact that some of you are still straggling in as I come up to the podium. But I hope you had a, a good day yesterday, uh, and I hope that you had a good time last night, and, and I hope that you have a good time today. And, and Janet said something that struck me when I was sitting there, and I think it is important. Uh, she said that it's important that, that the people who manage our systems, our frontline people, uh, are aligned to the priorities of political leaders. That's important, but I think the reverse is true as well. It's really important that political leaders are very tightly aligned to the work that you're doing and the advice that you give us. Uh, because frankly, one thing I've learned in all the portfolios I've had the privilege to hold, uh, all the responsibilities I've held at the munici municipal level, and I might talk a little bit about that today. Uh, one thing I've learned is that politicians cannot accomplish the things they want to accomplish unless they're very much aligned and working closely with those that have to implement those policies and work through those policies. And there's no sector that's had to adjust more to change and political pri priority changes than this sector. And you've been through almost a complete transformation over the last nine years or so, and that transformation continues. And I'll probably talk a little bit more about that in, in, in a few minutes. But I want to talk a little bit as well about some of the champions that I've met in this sector. And, and my relationship with uh, Kira Heineck goes back about 16 years now. And we were, I hadn't seen her in a few years, a number of years actually, uh, but it was uh, back in my early days uh, it, as a local councillor. And for those of you that don't know, I, I, I was a city councillor for about nine years uh, before I spent the last 10 years at the provincial level. Uh, and I was city councillor from Scarborough and then in those first six years of amalgamation, which were kind of crazy times in Toronto. And, and I remember at the time I, I was chair of community services uh, and uh, Kira came to us as a passionate advocate for the disadvantaged, the marginalized, and those who serve her needs. In those days we were in the midst, and some of you will remember, of, of what was really a bona fide housing crisis in the city. And we were opening shelters. In fact, we opened a record amount of shelters during that uh, three year, year period or so when I was community services chair, more than any city in North America, which isn't something to brag about. It's not good news that you have to do it, uh, but it was a lot of work for our frontline folks to be able to get that work done. Uh, but some of us in those days, and you may remember, would come to us really with an agenda of disruption and protest. That was their way, they had the right to do that. Frankly, it wasn't accomplishing much at that time. Kira came to us with, with the work that she was doing and the group that she was representing just as passionately, but with an agenda of constructive ideas. And you really did make a difference in those days. It was a long time ago and our memories are a little faded, but I see other people nodding their heads that were around at that point because that's how you do work and get things done. And that's part of the alignment, I think, that Janet talked about, is recognizing the realities that the decision makers of the day have to face, the balance that they have to do, the budgets that they have to eventually balance, and figuring out ways to make sure we can get all of our, our collective needs done uh, in, in a way that's aligned and that meets the needs of the clients uh, that are really the focus of, of, of all that we do. So I want to thank Kira for her leadership in those days. And Kira, I want to thank you for your leadership that continues today and the passion that you bring to this work. And you can give Kira a good morning round of applause for the work she does. She's shaking her head like this, but she deserves it. You know, I've had the opportunity uh, through my time as Minister of Training College and Universities to visit a number of our employment centers across this province. And and I want to tell you how impressed I am with the passion of our frontline people and the work that you do. And whether it's the implementation of our Youth Employment Fund, I don't know if some of you folks in this room have had the opportunity to help implement that uh, record amount of time. We had to do it, put it together almost in a matter of weeks 
Uh, and there's already in four weeks this, this, this plan's been in place. There's thousands of young people. I think we're up over 4,271 young people as of last Friday uh, that have had referrals and, and that are working in businesses and getting business experience as a result of that. Look, that doesn't happen because politicians decide to make a program work and, and fund it. Uh, that happens because people on the front line have the, the passion and experience and ability to, to create something out of nothing in no time at all. So for those of you that are involved in any way in the Empl Youth Employment Fund, I want on behalf of the government, on behalf of young people across this province, 25,000 of which will have a job placement in the next 24 months, I want to thank you for your work in impl implementing that program. And I think you deserve a round of applause for that as well, for those that are involved in that program. <laughs> this is how I get people going in the morning. I get them clapping. And yeah, you think about it, we have come a long way. Uh, you know, it's been 15 years of service realignment that we've been through. Uh, and it's, uh, we've seen significant reforms during that time from the beginning of the federal devolution days. And I think Heather will remember, I think I was chair of community services when that started to happen. And frankly, I didn't understand how that was all going to work. It was pretty messy at the time, and I wasn't sure it would ever completely land, but you folks made it happen. And I think you made it happen because your priority wasn't so much yourselves and the organizations that you work with. Your priority was always thinking of your frontline clients. Uh, and that, I think, is why this sector has been able to do so well. And in this period of transformation that we've been through, been able to ensure that we've been able to deliver programs that, that are excellent programs, that are very scrutinized, and that under that scrutiny stand up uh, in, the, in the light uh, incredibly well, which has given me the ability when we talk about the Canada Jobs Grant to be able to say the programs that we're providing in Ontario and frankly across the country under these labour market agreements are working. Uh, and that's really, really important for us to be able to make that case. The fact is we live in an incredibly complex global economy. It's fiercely competitive out there with changing needs for our businesses, changing needs for our clients in terms of training. And we must continue to evolve if we're going to meet the needs of our economy, meet the needs of our businesses, and meet the needs of our clients, all of which is critically important. And as you know, the province has committed to integrate employment and training services across, across government so that we can better focus our, our efforts on where the needs are. As we continue to look at how we deliver these critical services, we have an opportunity to ensure that our programs are focused on the needs of the people we serve, including employers. And I've had discussions with some of you earlier today, and I can see that that is a passion for each and every one of you to ensure we're meeting the needs of our employers. And when you look at the new programs that have come out and evolved in Ontario and across the province, many of them are very much employer focused. But they're also focused on ensuring those distant, most distant from our labor market, are getting a crack at, at training and employment as well. And that's really, really important, whether it's people on social assistance, whether it's at-risk youth, or any of those other groups of individuals that are just a little more distant from the labor market and need a little bit more training so that they can get into a position that they can be job ready. So I look forward to working with you to determine the best ways that we can continue to achieve that. And it's important, in fact, it's absolutely critical that my ministry and myself and our government continue to work closely with you as we evolve these training programs to get the best possible results. You know, working together, I'm absolutely confident that we can reform our programs to make them even more client and employer focused and ensure our entire training system is easy for all to navigate. And I think that's one of the challenges I see across Ontario today when you put up a, a chart of all the different in integrated relationships we have across Ontario between our organizations, it's pretty damn confusing. In fact, that chart just looks like a bunch of spaghetti all over the place right now. I think there are ways we can provide better uh, access and a better, easier way to navigate our system for employers and, and, and clients who enter our system in a number of, through a number of different doors. And I think that's what we're working on in that service integration uh, proposal. When we look, look at standard ways of assessing clients as they come in the door to ensure that they get access to that full range of services that you folks 
worked so hard to provide across this province. So as I look at this service integration, I've said to my cabinet colleagues, this might be the most complicated piece of public policy I've ever sat down and tried to work with. Thank God I'm not doing it myself because we'd never get there, but uh, it's incredibly complicated. At the same time, when we look at what we're trying to achieve, it's pretty exciting too. And I, I'm absolutely confident uh, that we can get there. And I wanna thank you for the input you've given to us thus far. Uh, this is not something that's gonna happen in, in a month or two. It's not something that's gonna be, be established in six months. This is something that's gonna evolve as our programs integrate and as our ministries work together better to integrate uh, that it's gonna take place over, or I would expect uh, at least a couple of years. Uh, we've gotta make sure not only that we do the right thing, but we do it the right way. Uh, and that's something that uh, is really, really important. I'm gonna be counting on you folks to ensure that we have the advice we need that as we implement these changes, uh, we do it together. And as we implement these changes, we ensure that we, we don't uh, we don't get caught up in some of the unintended consequences that sometimes the best intended policies uh, can bring on. And usually that happens because we haven't worked close enough with our frontline people. I wanna make sure that that doesn't happen uh, as we go through these changes today. I also wanna thank you as well for your, your, your communications, for standing up, from, for voicing your concerns about the Canada Job Grant. Your analysis early on was really helpful to us uh, to ensure that we could go out there and talk about what is a very poorly uh, planned and poorly thought through proposal from the federal government. As you know, for those of you that I think you all know what I'm talking about here, uh, that the uh, federal government current proposal would cut about 60% of our funding under the labor market agreement. Uh, that's the funding that goes to our most vulnerable, marginalized workers. Uh, progr pro programs that, as I said earlier, are proven to be working. Uh, to fund what is an untested and untried Canada Jobs Grant. I think most of you are familiar with the issue. Most of you have probably been reading the papers. Ontario and every province and territory are united against this, uh, this proposal. We're standing up against this concept as it's currently proposed. I want you to know I believe in your work. I want you to know our Premier believes in your work and we know y that you're achieving good results through our programs from our literacy and basic skills to our apprenticeship programs, to programs that serve people with disabilities, Aboriginal people, newcomers, older workers, and perhaps most important of all, our younger workers and our, and our youth at risk. That's why myself and the Premier have taken a national lead in ensuring that we, we do everything that we can to protect funding for these programs under the labor market agreement. And I wanna assure you, we will not contemplate supporting any federal program that's funded on the backs of our most vulnerable population. That would be bad social policy, but it would also be bad economic policy. We know that the work that these programs do is so important, and the work that many of you do here today is so important. In fact, it's absolutely critical to the future of those marginalized workers that you're working with, but also to our economic future. So it's very important that we make that connection. So I wanna ask you to continue your, to voice your concerns, continue to join with myself and our Premier in our efforts to convince Canadians and the federal government that these programs are delivering results and they must be preserved. And so I wanna thank you for your support on that and I wanna thank you for the strong voice that, that all of you across the province have put forward. It's really important province-wide that the people of this province know exactly what's at stake we're doing okay in our negotiations with the federal government. I think we're making our point. And I think the fact that the provinces and the territories are absolutely aligned and united on this, and I mean, we're all Canadians, we know that doesn't happen all that often. When that happens, it means that we're, uh, we've got a pretty good case to make. Uh, and we're making it very vigorously and uh, it will be ultimately up to the federal government whether they wanna hear us and listen to us uh, but we're gonna keep making that case as long as we possibly can, and we, uh, we expect and hope that we're gonna, gonna see the, the results that we wanna see. You know, I've been, as, as was mentioned, I've been in public office now, and it's hard to believe, for close to 20 years. And one of the privileges I've, I, I've had in holding a number of different posts through, I think five or six different cabinet posts and a number of different posts at the city 
is you come across people, uh, public servants uh, that are absolute champions. Uh, people that are passionate about what they do, people that are absolute leaders, and every now and again you come across somebody who just absolutely stands out. So that 20 years later, or 15 years later, I remember those, those individuals, and I remember the work that they've done, and we're gonna honor Heather McVicker in a few minutes, but Heather McVicker's here today, and she's one of those heroes. She's one of those champions, and I'm honored to be here today, to be able to join you, to, to recognize Heather, her career and her achievements. And you know, it was back during my days again as Chair of Community Services that I originally met Heather. She was General Manager of Toronto Employment and Social Services at the City of Toronto in those days, and they were challenging times. And at the time, Toronto was provided with, uh, I don't know if some of you folks would remember this, it was like a, an incentive grant uh, that would go to municipalities when we met our social assistance objectives. And in Toronto, we were meeting our social assistance objectives big time, and, and, uh, and the grant was significant. I don't remember the dollars then, but it was a significant amount of money. So we were having a very vigorous debate at the city. It was one-time funds, so we couldn't put into our, into our operating budget as much as uh, it would have been uh, helpful. Uh, it was one-time funds, so we had to think of something we could do on a one-time basis that would have kind of a legacy effect. So Heather had an idea, and she simply wouldn't let go of it because it wasn't unanimous. It, she had to really fight for this. The idea was to use the funds to purchase computers for young people who couldn't afford to buy them at the time. In the end, she convinced all of us that we had to do this. And the result was a program that's been absolutely phenomenal. It was the Kids at Computer Scholarship Project. It's now provided 18,000, and Heather, I can't, could, couldn't believe it when I found out uh, actually yesterday, 18,000 young people in Toronto were given access to this very critical technology that ensured that they didn't, uh, they, they weren't subject to barriers because they couldn't afford computer technology and they were allowed to be able to learn on a level playing field with students right across this city. Heather, that program was absolutely phenomenal and uh, I just want to, on behalf of, of all of us in the city of Toronto and all of us across the province, thank you for your dedication to that program which to me stands out as one of a number of things that you achieved at the city, but that's one, that was a Heather McVicker project. It really was because uh, there was a lot of there was it, there were a lot of challenges going on at the city at the time, and Heather just said this is what we need to do, and she just uh, it went to committee a bunch of times, got debated, it got punted back. You folks will know what that's about to, in, in your different uh, min municipalities, uh, but she just doggedly kept on with it. So, Heather, in my books, you are a true hero, and folks, I want to tell you that, and I, the premier agrees with me on this as well. Each and every one of you are heroes for the work that you're doing in your municipalities across this province on behalf of those clients that we're, we're so privileged to be able to serve. So I want to thank Heather for what uh, work that she's done. I want to thank each and every one of you for the incredible work that you do day in and day out. On behalf of the Premier, on behalf of the people of Ontario, thank you for the work you do. On behalf of the people of Ontario, in particular those who you serve on a daily basis, Thank you for dedicating your careers to improving the skills, the training, and ultimately, most important of all, the lives of Ontarians. Thank you all so much for being here today, and thank you for listening. Thank you.